first video at home in my house. Let's go. Um, so MD's been here today. MD Fish Tanks has been here today, helping me skate my brand new Oazi Skater Line tank. Now he's gone home at the moment because we spent way too long at the pub at lunchtime. So he's gone home um, and he's left me to do all the boring bits. I say boring, all the technical bits because obviously he's the artist, I'm the technical bloke supposedly. So I thought I'd do a quick product review. Obviously I'm gonna do one on the skate line at some point, but that's not today. Today, we're doing a product review on this monster, this thing here. Blurry is what it is. Biomaster Thermo 600. Now this one is a little bit bigger than probably what I need on that, but because I'm going for the sort of river scape, I wanted some good flow and a big filter. Cause you know, why not? They are all the same. I believe most of them are just different sizes and different flow rates, but we'll get into that into a minute. Into that in a minute. Let's go, let's unbox it. Let's have a look what's going on. So as always, boring bit first, the box. Very little exciting ever on these boxes, but you have got a three plus one year guarantee. So generally that means you get three years standard and then you get an extra year if you fill in some paperwork or you go online and fill out something. So yeah, really good guarantee on them, to be honest. Um, on the back, you have got all your flow rates, electricity consumption, um, all of that sort of stuff. Now they do the three sizes on the back of this box. They also do an 850, I think it is, which is their biggest one. Um, but yeah, really the differences in the filters isn't very much as in from model to model. What you've got is you've just got an increase in size in everything. So an increase in the heater size, an increase in the pump size, filter media size. It's just everything is slightly bigger, but the general concept of how they go together, how they work, the cool little pre-filter that comes in them, it's all the same across the whole range. I was just having a look, and I'll be totally honest, it might be a saint for a future video, but I was just looking at the wattages, and this one that does up to, in theory, a 600 litre aquarium. This one has only running at like 22 watts power consumption on the pump itself. The heat is obviously 300 watts, but once you get your tank up to heat, in theory, there's no real need to um, well, there's, that's not going to be kicking in as much. So yeah, it should be quite an energy efficient filter. As you can hear, this is why I haven't made videos for four or five weeks, because my boy has just kicked off in the background, but luckily the wife has gone to the rescue to grab hold of him. But let's unbox and see where we go. And I might go and help with that quickly. Yeah, let's get out of Let's go. Let's go. So I have, I believe, had this one slightly open before. I had to take some uh, pictures for a, for a customer. But I think it was just for the top bit. So yeah, when you open it, obviously you've got your main filter. Now the cool thing with the ORZ is they've got a massive chunky handle on them. So you can like really manhandle that and lift it about and get it out of the way. Cool thing as well is the uh, handle actually stops the clips on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but it stops the clips on the side from actually coming up. So you can't take the head unit off unless you've got the handle out the way. Um, so it's just a nice little safety feature really. And you've got four clips, it, literally one on each side. This is your main filter, this is how it comes. Now what you've got, like I say, you've got four clips on each, one on each side. You've got your heater element sat in the back here. So you've got a separate plug for your heater element. I've tangled them up something chronic. But yeah, you've got a separate plug for your heater element and then a separate plug for your uh, pump. When you come to taking these apart, they are one of the simplest things on the market, but we'll go through that in a minute once I get uh, it on the tank, because it's much easier to show you. So yeah, that's the main filter, in and out. That's your uh, priming button so that you can get the pump primed. Then, you get the box of parts, box of bits and pieces. And what you get in there is your two lengths of hose. So really nice, quite thick, good quality hose from Oada. You wouldn't expect anything less. You get all of your elbows. So these are the elbows that go over the top of the aquarium. Your suction cups. You get the little rings that go onto here. All those bits in there. Spray bars. That there, it's a bit of a random part. I don't know if it will focus. 
but that there is a cap. So if you ever want to take your heater out and run your heater elsewhere, that cap stops your uh, filter from piddling water up the top. That's the bracket for the heater. Again, if you want to take that out. Um, and then standard guarantees, warranties, instruction manuals. Yeah, I've set so many of these filters up. I really don't, hopefully, I say that now with confidence. Hopefully I don't need the instruction manual. But yeah, let's open up that bag. Let's show you all the bits a little bit more in depth so you can see what's what, what. And then we'll get it running, or I say, get it set up on the aquarium. So, as I said, these are your two shepherd's crooks, as I would call them, um, or your elbows to go over the top of the aquarium. You've got these guys that screw onto there so that they lock your filter piping on so you can lock them on. And then obviously you pop all the bits on the front of it. So what you'll have, if I can get this right, that one on there. So that's your strainer. Oh no. One of the parts has gone in the top of it. I don't know if you can see. Let's push that through. Or not. There we go. I got it. So yeah, you've got your strainer which clips onto there, onto there, and that can obviously adjust down and up a little bit. That will go on the inside of the aquarium on one of these boys, like so. And then you've got your spray bar or you can just have a nozzle outlet. So you've got an elbow that can go on the end here so you can direct your flow. Or then you've got your spray bar that you can add to that with then an end cap to stop the water flow coming out the far end there. You have also got a director nozzle. And again, it seems to be focusing on the Oasi more than it focusing on these parts, but yeah, a little director nozzle. And then a ton of clips and suction cups and bits and pieces for your aquarium to make sure your filter sits in there nicely. The boy has just woken up again. Oh yeah, bag of rubber feet. They go in the bottom of the filter just to stop any vibration. So let's get that rigged up. Let's get them popped on now. <laughs> the boy is kicking off. So these guys just push straight into the bottom of this filter, into each corner. And that'll obviously stop any noise or stop a lot of the vibration noise you find some of the cheaper filters on the market actually don't come with any rubber feet. Um, they just come with like a solid plastic that base that sort of sits on the cabinet. And if it vibrates at all, that's where a lot of the noise can come from. So Awazi have thought of that and have uh, made that quite a nice little feature. So I thought we'll open it up. Let's see what we get with it and see what comes with it. So for this one, what you've got to do is you've got these two handles on either side here. Now you can't unlock the pre-filter before you unlock the pipe work. That turning round from there to there stops the water flow down into the main filter body. So if you don't do that, water would come out of everywhere. So yeah, you can't actually unlock that one until you unlock the other side. You can see how hard that is. That just doesn't open up. But yeah, unlock, unlock. That then, obviously, this would normally have pipes on it, so you would normally pop this one up and leave that one dangling in a bucket inside your aquarium cabinet. And then you'd find that this is your pre-filter, so you'd pull this one out, and this is where 90% of your muck, well, I say 90, a lot of your muck is gonna end up going. Um, cool thing with these is they've got a little rubber valve in the bottom, so when you pull that out of there, no water will exit that. If you've, if you didn't have that rubber valve, it would flush all the waste and all the muck right back out to the bottom. Um, really easy to clean, so all you do is there's two clips. Oh, I think I've done that off the camera then, let's try again. So there's one clip on one side, one on the other. Literally press them together, pull it down, and you're into all your pre-filters. Um, I've seen lots of people saying online that you know you should drill more holes in this center tube. You know, if you want to, that's absolutely fine if you want to do that. It probably will, one, invalidate your warranty, um, and two, most of the time, the big companies have put a lot of design and a lot of sort of research and design into these filters. So they've, they've 
made them the way they are for a reason. So I personally won't be drilling any extra holes or messing around with um, any extra cutting or drilling. But if you want to, that's on your sort of head. Personally, I wouldn't bother. They have been designed to work that way. Um, and like I say, it possibly will if they checked it, if your motor burnt out or something like that and you wanted to send it back, that it will probably invalidate your warranty. Um, but yeah, that's a simple pre-filter. Simple as that, obviously I'll pop that one off. Normally your pipe work would be attached to that one. And then, like I say, you've got to lift that handle up so that you can get in quick, otherwise those clips won't come off. Pull open the four clips, crush your finger in the process, and you lift that out. Now you have to be a little bit more careful with obviously the Awaza than a lot of other ones. The Biomaster Thermo obviously comes with this heater that sits down inside of the um, filter itself. Some people will remove the heater first. I think it does say in the instructions to remove the heater first, but it is a simple like, unlock and pull out so you can do that if you want to personally i'm just really careful with them i pull them out like i say you might be able to see that on camera there if i do it but yeah you can twist and pull out the heater if you want to gets it out of the way for maintenance but as long as you're careful you're normally absolutely fine i would, i keep them placed in it just saves saves an extra job so yeah pull that one out chuck that one to one side Make sure obviously everything's turned off and pulled, all the plugs are pulled out. You don't want your heater staying on while it's outside of the uh, filter. That will not end well for anyone. And yeah, really then you're into all your medias. Now, these Oasi I know go very, very heavy on the sponges. Um, I quite like that because you do get a lot of waste removal. But for most tanks, I do end up removing one of these sponges and replacing it with sort of a ceramic media because you've got three coarse sponges and one fine sponge there. So yeah, personally, I like to put a little bit more biomedia and then I can never remember the name of this plastic media that Awazi do, but you get this plastic media in the bottom. So yeah, like I say, I like to put a little bit of ceramics in. I think for this tank, just to see how well the Awazi runs, I think I might run it standard. Just keep it as it comes off the shelf see what it does and see how well it filters. So uh, yeah, I think we'll keep it like this. We'll go for now. I'm gonna put it, well, actually I'll put it back together quickly on camera look. So yeah, they just literally clip together on the baskets or sit together as it were. So simple, so easy. And then you can just slide them back in. Makes life easier with these two little handles on so that you can slide them in and out very simply. Um, other than that, nothing too exciting on these guys. You can see there is, oh, we might be able to. There's that circle in the bottom there. That circle is where the heater sits. So you need to make sure you orientate these guys the right way around. Other than that, fairly simple, fairly easy filter to take apart and clean and put back together. So I'll, uh, I'll quickly put it back together. Then we'll get it up on my new tank. So it's actually been about two hours since I last was playing with the filter. In between the boy crying and needing feeding and uh, me needing feeding, it sort of got a bit busy. So uh, I've come back to it all and I'm not sure where I was. But I think I was just about to show you the heater quickly. So if this seems a little bit sort of disjointed, that'd be why. But yeah, on the filters, you've obviously got the heater that sits in this back corner here. Now all it is, there's a little tab and you literally push it it swivels round and then it pops the heater out quite nicely and quite simply. So yeah, it's quite an easy one to deal with. The dial for the temperature is just on the top here. Now I don't know if I'll be able to focus on that. No, because my camera's rubbish. But what you've got is you've just got a blue dial that you spin around um, and you can go anywhere from, what have we got on it, 18 degrees all the way up to 32. So yeah, quite a nice range of temperatures. I do believe as well, I've not done it yet, but I do believe you can also adjust the um, sort of calibration of these heaters. So if you find your heaters a couple of degrees out, which can happen on a lot of these heaters, if you find it's a couple of degrees out, you can actually use this black sort of bit on top of the blue bit to calibrate your heater slightly so that you can actually get it to be running accurate. 
I generally do it where if it's running at 26 and I've got it set to 25, I just turn it down a little bit. But yeah, quite nice to be able to calibrate your heater and mess around with it. So that one just slots back in, locks in place. Really nice, really easy. They're so simple. So uh, I suppose the next thing is to uh, get it rigged up on the tank. So the only thing I've done to get the filter ready to put in the cupboard is to put these two blue sort of locking nuts on. Just got to lock this one back in place because I unlocked that one earlier. And uh, that would be a catastrophe if I unlocked that. And that's it. So you just pop those two in. Now with the scape line, I don't know if you can see, uh, there's a really cool little nice soft shut or soft closed shelf that goes in the cupboard. And the filter can sit quite nicely on that. So the next job really is to cut this massive length of piping to size and then get the shepherd's crooks or the uh, elbows as I would call them up on the top of the tank. So there we go, placed straight on. Really easy to put on actually to be fair and it's really nice of Awazi to give us extra pipe because honestly when you cut it wrong like I did there's enough there spare to mess around with. But yeah I did, I did cut that quite badly wrong. But yeah, all placed on, they're really easy to push on. Put the two blue locking nuts, like I showed you earlier, straight on. And away we go. The next thing I've got to put on, so you get these cool little suction cups with these clips, so they just push onto there, and then you can clip them around the pipe work. They come with these sort of double uh, sort of clips so that you can clip it around either the thicker or thinner pipe work that comes with this filter. So they're really smart, really nice. I think they just push in like so. I believe. Yeah, that's it. And then they're pushed in. That's on. Simple as that. So they're just on like that. And then, hopefully, that will clip onto there. And then that will suction cup onto the glass. Like so. So let's put a few more of them on. So there we go. I've installed two suction cups on the down tube there. Now you can see this is a 50 centimetre tank. So it actually reaches, sorry for the reflection actually, you can't really see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it actually reaches, the uh, inlet tube reaches all the way to the bottom of a 50 centimetre tank. There's not a great deal more after you get after that, it's probably to here. So you might just be able to get it sort of near the bottom of a two foot tank, but definitely fits to the bottom of a 50 centimetre. And then I've just popped one over on this inlet over here. Now I think that's about all I can do right now. Um, you know, I've got the two plugs, all the pipe works in. The pipe work was really simple to put in, so you can see I've installed that in there. Um, I don't think there's much more I can do this evening until MD comes back tomorrow and we fill this tank up and get the filter running. So, yeah, watch this space. This is going to fast forward about 12 hours now. So I'm back. Rather than leaving it 12 hours, I thought I'd leave it 12 days. What sort of test is 12 hours, let's be honest, on a filter? I'm sure a lot of you have watched the video of this being set up over on MD Fish Tank's channel. It's doing really, really well. All the fish are like mega active and mega happy. Yes, you too, Roma. Beautiful. Um, the filter's done really, really well. I've, see, I said that uh, I said in the video I was going to leave it as standard. The big piece of wood I put in there did leach out a lot of tannins. So I have ended up putting a little bit of carbon in there, a little bit of purigen, which has helped me along and just got rid of that slight sort of yellow stain to the water that this tank wasn't about that. I wanted this tank to be quite clear. Um, other than that, the filter has run a standard plastic filter media that comes with the uh, Oasis. Wonderful. Um, plastic media that comes with them and also all the sponges that comes with them. So this is the first clean it's going to have in, I think, two weeks. Yeah, 12 days, two weeks, something like that. Let's clean it out, let's see how the filter's performing, strip it all apart and see where we're at. So I've unplugged and turned off the filter and the heater now. As I was explaining earlier in the video, all I need to do is turn the hosing lever round and pop that lever, pop that hosing off of here. And that's it, that's it disconnected from the main filter body. So once you've got that one out, we can then start looking at cleaning the main filter. So once you've got your filter out and obviously removed your heater, that means you can unlock and remove the pre-filter sponges. So a little bit of water will come out of the top where it's got the sort of clips on it. 
but once you get it past that point and once it stops sort of dripping the majority of water will stay in this canister again two buttons on each side oh yeah they are quite mucky look so they have caught a hell of a lot of muck from the aquarium so these were like perfectly blue when they first started so you can see the sort of coloration of them there so they have done a really good job of taking out all those fine bits of debris so let's get these cleaned and back on this filter and then we'll have a look at the main sponges so as you can see cleaned all the pre-filter sponges out you can see how much of a difference that's made to them and then made in the coloration of them obviously they have caught the majority or i'm hoping they've caught the majority of the muck before it obviously goes through to the main sponges but we're gonna have a look at them next so let's clip that one back together maybe like so that one's all clipped back together now we'll pop that one to one side and let's get the main sponges out now as i've said before I'm running out of space on my little towel behind here i think i need a bigger towel but as i've said before you've got four clips one on each side for the oazi and this handle needs to be lifted up to be able to take the uh, main filter apart so once you unclip those four the head unit will come up now, there's a little bit of water in the top there that will just pour away now there shouldn't be much more water left in that one so i'm just going to pop that one back inside the cupboard on the towel so this last sponge here will be the one that's probably the least mucky just because it's the one that's right at the top after all of the other sponges so that one's maintained it's quite nice orange coloration not a great deal of muck there's a little bit of discoloring in it and a little bit of waste in there so we'll just give that one a quick squeeze out but yeah really that one's actually quite clean it's caught obviously some fines because it's a a bit of a finer sponge than all the others but that one's not too bad at all try and put it in the right way around helps next basket i did put my carbon and my purigen in just to uh keep my water a little bit cleaner so that's just yeah a little bag of carbon and a little bag of purigen which i'm just going to keep in there i'll just sink that one down into the bottom of there for the minute and i can clean that one up now let's have a look at the main sponges going through so again these big big chunks of foam have caught a fair amount of muck as you can see there even though this tank's only been running a couple of weeks it's surprising how much waste that has captured in that short period of time so there's one and obviously um, i'll do these a bit better off camera cleaning them wise before i put them all back together number two so yeah again just caught that so i did remove one of the sponges to be able to put my purigen in um, and my carbon so there is one that i've got left over and here's that plastic media from oase and like i say i've left it in the net bag just to allow me to be able to quickly clean it out um you should still get half decent flow through there the only problem is if you remove it out of the basket it floats so it can become a little bit trickier to try and contain it all when you're doing your filter maintenance and that's the last bag basket there generally you can see that sort of discoloring on the media that's you know it is getting a little bit more mature that brown coloration is a bit of a biofilm that's growing on there so it's nice to see that because it's not that pure white coloration that it went in and that's it that is the filter cleaned well semi-cleaned i'm going to go through and do it properly now off camera but i'm just going to give the sponges a quick squeeze out make sure they're all clean and the majority of mucks out and then pop it all back together so now that i've fully cleaned everything out we're just going to pop it back together obviously remembering that in the bottom of the filter case you've got that little circle not sure if you can see it there but you can see that little circle i've got to make sure obviously the filter baskets go the right way around to fit around that there we are so that's all the filter media back in with the sort of cage placed on top to stop the uh, sponge from lifting up so next we're going to pop our head unit back on making sure we line up the heater hole with the hole that goes down through for the heater clip all of those down like so then we can gently place our heater back in that was pretty much all off of camera placing that heater back in so there you go so we can slide our heater 
back into the back chamber here and then literally it is a quarter turn to lock it all in place and then you've got this little groove that the cable sits into. That handle can go back down. Pre-filter gets placed back in. Now there's a wide nozzle, a uh, wide nozzle. There's a small tooth and a big tooth. That slit sits in there. You can then lock that one in place and that's ready to go back in the cupboard and get running. Now that the filter's all back together, your pre-filters are in, your heater's in, all that's left to do is sit that on top of there, like so, and then you can pull the handle around. Now, you've obviously got the priming button on top of here to be able to prime it, but in theory, once these pipes are full of water, it should, once I do that, fill itself full of water pretty much, and you might just need to prime the, there we go, press the priming button a couple of times to get the air out of it. Now, obviously, once you've plugged it in, it'll expel some air for a few minutes, but once it gets rid of all of that air in the chamber, that will dissipate and stop. So there you are, the biomass of Thermo. Obviously, it's been running on this tank, like I say, for a good, you know, nearly two weeks now, and there's very few cons that I can find with the heater. It's all been pros. The way that the pre-filter works, the way that you've got the levers that stop the water coming out if you open one before the other and you can't do that. It's just everything has been thought about. They haven't missed very many things. Um, the only thing I would say that if they are watching, put a light on the heater somewhere that you can see it. Um, I'm running a little digital thermometer on the far side of this tank just to keep a track of the uh, temperature in the aquarium. But yeah, it would just be nice to have an indicator light somewhere you can see it. Obviously the heater is designed to go inside the aquarium not really in the filter. They obviously have made it so that you can, but the indicator light is actually on the glass and that disappears inside your heat, inside your filter. So yeah, a nice little indicator light on the, maybe on the top of the filter or so that you can see through the filter maybe, I don't know. There's gotta be a way of doing it. I'm sure they'll think of something in the future. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've got loads more coming soon. Um, more builds with MD fish tanks, obviously, because me and him just can't stay away from each other. Um, Possibly some big stuff in the pipeline as well with a couple of people that I know. So yeah, watch this space for that. I have just managed to get hold of one of these as well. ONF Flat Nano. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited to play with this. I haven't actually opened it yet and I haven't had time to open it, but that will be going on a nano tank at home probably sometime in the future in the next week or so. Hopefully I didn't just break it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Next review done. Hopefully give me a couple of days and I'll get another one out. Fingers crossed. I'm waffling now. I'm going to stop. Bye.